we always heard about this mysterious lakes that are located in Yakutia, which is the huge region on the uh, east of Russia. Very few people know that there are lakes here. They're very remote, very rarely visited, that hold this big, mysterious Arctic char. Last year, when we were on the trip to Yakutia, we decided we need to try it at least once. And we started collecting the information about where we should we go. Finally, we found this picture in the internet on one of the local Yakutian websites that showed these three local guys holding monster char. And it took us a while to find out what lake this was, and it turned out it was Lake Libalach. Situated in the middle of Verkhoyansk mountain range, this is an extremely, extremely remote place. So by our standards, going to Yakutia is like going to the middle of nowhere. But going to this part of Yakutia is the middle of middle of middle of nowhere. There's been some intriguing stories about different places. Some stories from uh, reindeer herders, uh, stories of these huge Arctic char that are landlocked and live in this lake. And Ilya started sending these photographs around of these uh, reindeer herders and these frozen Arctic char in the winter and how these guys have caught them through the ice. And it, it, it gets you thinking about, uh, are we going to be able to catch these on the fly? Are we going to be able to figure it out? Are these deep water species, where are they catching them? Are they catching them in the lake? Are they catching them in the river? Or when you get to this lake, is it going to be just too big and too difficult? This place is not easy to get to. We are in the middle of a very serious mountain range, which always has clouds, rain, and we just discovered snow. We are in the middle of July, it's the warmest part of the year, and it's actually snowing. We're finally here at base camp on the lake in Siberia, in the mountains, and it's uh, been a hell of a trip to get here. I flew from Orlando to Frankfurt, Frankfurt to Moscow, Moscow to Yakutsk, Yakutsk to Zhugansk, and once in Zhugansk we got a helicopter out here to the camp. It's amazing when you take off in the helicopter and you're flying through this tundra and over these big river systems and all of a sudden you hit this sort of peaking mountain range. The mountain range is as high as you're flying, you're ducking and diving through the valleys. Eventually you come up onto this wonderful lake. I'll never forget the first time that the helicopter turns to make the land and we get the first glimpse of, of, of the lake and just the location that we're, that we're in. Um, just an unbelievably beautiful place. The thing that struck me the most was the, was the silence. Just absolute silence. I'm arriving in the camp yesterday. Yeah, the weather's really turned. It's bitterly cold, as you can see outside. It's an incredible place here. You know, the thing is that the seasons change every second. One minute you're hot and you've got mosquitoes everywhere. Next minute we've got uh, snow, sideways sleet, and uh, it's, it's well below zero. There's, there's, no, there's no textbook on this. There's, there's, there's no information. You, you have all the pieces of a jigsaw puzzle and, and it's up to you to put them together. Seeing this fish was another thing. I mean, one day you come, you see a fish, you cast a streamer and it grabs it. The other day you come, you see 10 fish and you cast to them once, twice, three times. You're changing flies, they're not reacting. Sometimes they would follow looking at it, but obviously they're not eating. We went across the local reindeer herder to get some uh, information on, on, on the fishery and he, he said to us that, you know, the best time to fish is when there's mosquitoes. And he wasn't far wrong because whenever it was warm and the mosquitoes were out, uh, we'd find the fish in the shallows. Reindeer men here, uh, they're very nice people, very friendly, but you don't get much information from them about fishing. So uh, a local guy, Tuyan, that we met, a uh, very nice character, when we started asking him about fishing, he couldn't really point us at any specific spots. He said, look, I, I don't go fishing. I, I don't even have a, a boat. I just put a net next to my house. So it wasn't extremely useful. But what 
was useful is looking at the pictures that Tuyan shows us. I mean, those were the pictures of some big, big fish. He's lived here all his life, and I could see him like running his hands along our fly lines. He'd never actually seen someone fly fish before. Um, and I, he, I, he probably thought we were foolish using the gear that we were using. <laughs> I suppose it was in all our heads at that stage that it's possible to catch ridiculously big char. And I mean, I had to catch one of these. I, I couldn't leave here without catching one of them. Slowly, piece by piece, little bits of information came together and um, we started catching them. He's huge, yeah? He's fucking huge. What do you mean the shallows are? It's like a boat fish. Eight point five kilos. The last thing about Siberia is the weather's always predictable. Like all fishermen, we thought we'd, we'd cracked the code and we went another couple of days with, you know, very little success and, and sort of the lake brought us back down to earth again. I was unbelievably hungry for a fish. I backed in for another cast and, and it just went even more solid than the fish before. He's pulling the boat around. <laughs> oh, yes. They didn't give themselves up, and I'm almost glad that they didn't. It's like a blur of. I don't know, it was, just, it was just a blur, it was amazing, it was something you dream about. We hope to come here once again. It's going to take me probably close to 45 hours to get back, but uh, I'll happily turn around and pack my bags again and come back here tomorrow. To say that you're probably one of the handful of people that has fished this place just because of its its uh, its location it's it's unique yeah it's just untouched <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>